Now for the show that's truly too hot to handle. It's the melting pack, and it starts right now. Why, thank you, Jerome. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the show, The Melting Pat. Thank you so much for being here. It is great to be back. We're doing this early because, well, I'm going to be really busy this week. So, uh, because, you know, when you take a week off, there's generally a pile of stuff for you to do when you get back. So, I may be working through lunch here. Not officially, but yeah, you get it. If any uh, work people are listening, I'm not working through lunch. All right, I have to say that so I don't get in trouble. But yeah, so I'm going to be really busy. So uh, I want to do this on my day off. Thank you, Jill, for uh, you know watching the kid for an hour or so while I can do this. So thanks for that. So yes, we're doing this on Monday. So no question, no updated sports, none of that stuff. Um, and this is essentially like a, it's a vacation recap episode today. Just because, well, again, it's Monday and nothing's really happened since then. So uh, brought to you by Dave and Miriam, I guess. Can we say that? Is that okay? They didn't pay me, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I should pay them. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's what's going on today, friends. We have uh, we got a song, which we're going to play in a second. We're talking about We Went Down the Shore. Thanks again to Dave and Miriam for that. We're going to talk all about it. Uh, the Phillies are fun again. The Brewers did a good thing. We'll talk Warriors a little bit and the Stanley Cup final. And we got a little Pat Peeve that is based on, uh, well, it happened on vacation. I don't want to talk about it. So that is what is going on with the show today. I guess I can get rid of this on the phone there. There we go. Oh, now I can see myself. Is that better? I hope so. I don't know, man. And well, man, um, if you subscribe to the Patreon, you've been here for about 10 minutes already, 12 minutes, whatever it is. And you got a little bonus story of of something we overheard while we were at the park on vacation. So um, yeah, subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash the melting pat. You can see me do a video version of this show. I wear a a different headband every time. I I don't have like 48 headbands. I have like 12. But if you would like to subscribe, it's $5. And then you get video versions of all the podcasts, you get bonus videos, you get some bonus writing things that I'm doing, and uh, eventually some song demos too. So, and whatever else, like I'll do, I'll do whatever else uh, that I can do here. If you have a request, let me know. And then, you know, I feel better about taking your money. All right. All right. So there you go. Plus, if more people subscribe to the thing, then I can get a real camera and this will look better and I'll feel better about the whole thing. So there you go with all that. All right. So basically give me five bucks a month and then I can get a real camera. And then we'll talk about getting a get a, some uh, Melting Pat merchandise. All right? Can we do that? Great. Wonderful. So, yeah, that's um, that's the menu for today. All right? we got the, It's basically, again, a vacation recap because it's Monday and nothing else has happened. But uh, I think we're going to have some fun today. And then we'll get mad at people being stupid. So how about that? Does that work for you? Great. Wonderful. Good. Great. Great. Wonderful. No yelling on the bus. Um, there you go. That's a joke for one. Uh, <laughs> it's a reference for one, I should say. Not something I made up. So let's do all that. But first, we got a song from our new friends. The band is called Lip Candy. L-I-P Candy. There you go. Did I need to? Ju- did I? Why did I do that? I don't know either. Um, they want me to tell you, by the way, that their debut EP is called Where Did All the Bands Go? It's out later this summer. Debut EP. Let's go. Let's go. And uh, they are on, let's see, Patreon and Twitch. It's at lip or um, patreon.com and twitch.tv slash lip candy. They're on TikTok and Facebook at lip candy music, Twitter and Instagram at underscore lip candy. There we go. I, I think I got it all right. They said, talk about the debut EP and the social media. And I got all that stuff. So we're good. And also, if you go to Lip Candy, what is it? Oh, shoot. I think it's lipcandymusic.com. You know what? I'm going to find out right now so you don't get it. So I don't get it wrong. It's lipcandyband.com. There we go. So lipcandyband.com. Sign up for the newsletter. You get the new song for free. The song you're going to hear right this second. Right now. Not right this second. But in a brief moment, you will hear their latest song. All right? We're good, right? Yes, I did all the things. The band is Lip Candy. Thank you very much. This is uh, the song. It's their latest. It's called Straight Jacket. It's the Melting Pat. Enjoy.
I'm getting good at the games that you play Like when you said you would turn him away But then he walks through the door and you just can't wait Oh yeah You said it, you got it You won't get anything tonight I feel it, I taste it All right, there you have it. There it is. Our friends, Lip Candy, our new friends, thank you very much. Their song, Straight Jackets, their debut EP. Where did all the bands go? Coming out later this summer. They're on, uh, let's see, lipcandyband.com and all the socials that I told you five minutes ago or whatever. So there you go. Thank you to our new friends. You know, I listened to that like four times just to make sure like I wasn't going too high or I like there's a it's a long, longer kind of solo. And um, it's totally sick, by the way. I loved it. And there were a couple of I could have gone with the intro. I could have gone with the with that. I, I don't know what I ended up, you know, how that ended up sounding. I'd, I'll find out during the week. But, um, you know, I felt OK. I had fun with it. And I think that's that's really the the entire point of me doing that is to make myself laugh. And that's kind of like sometimes it makes the band laugh, too. So there you go. If you didn't, I'll tell you what, if you listen to this and you didn't laugh, then don't tell the band I did that. All right. But if you liked it, then it'd be like, hey, he played you on the show and then he did a weird, did a weird, you know, mouth riff of your song. Um, anyway, lipcandyband.com. Find more from them there and let them know I sent you and they'll say, oh, that weird guy who did that thing. Yeah, we know him. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. See, this is why the timestamp says, like, the song is at, like, 2.43, and the next topic is, like, 7.48, right? Because I just keep rambling all this sh- out of my mouth. It just, I don't know what happens. I'm not, that Michael Scott thing, like, sometimes I start a sentence, and I don't even know where it's going. It's kind of what this whole show is. Should that be, like, the tagline for the show? Should I change it from crap open a cold one to, uh, to I don't even know where this is going? Does that work? No? All right, anyway, thank you to Lip Candy for the song. They're never going to come back. Like, they're never going to be like, hey, sure, play our stuff again. They're like, no, can you erase this? Thanks. All right, and I will, and I will. So today, <laughs> oh, my gosh, what a great, what a way to get get going here today. Good Lord. Lipcandyband.com. There you go. Straight jacket. It's SR, I'm sorry. I can't even, well, I, you know I can't read. S-T-R-8-J-C-K-T. Straight jacket. That's how it's spelled. I don't know if I'm supposed to say it weirdly. But, um, you know, I read it weirdly enough. Does that count? So there you go. All right. So let's get on with it, Pat. Come on, man. Do this. dude. You got stuff to do. You are right. You are absolutely right. So we went on vacation. There we go. Let's get on track here. This episode basically is brought to us by Dave and Miriam because 
Uh, it was their condo we stayed at during the week, and uh, thank you very much. That was their Christmas gift to all of us. Um, every, you know, every kid in their family got a, a week down the shore, Ocean sit down the shore. If you don't know what that means, it means we went to the beach. Uh, <laughs> have to remember that not everyone who listens to this show lived on the East Coast and knows what that means. So we went to the beach, Ocean City, and um, I don't know if I should out them where exactly they are, so I won't go any further than that, but we had quite a week. You know, the kid had never been to the beach before or the pool, the place had a pool, so we tried all that stuff. Um, he hated the beach. My son is one, if you don't know, and uh, we took him to the beach and he, you know, you let him walk on the sand, and I held him because the reason, like, there's a video of me uh, holding him while he walks on the sand, and the reason, like, he can walk on his own, kind of, like, he's gotten better at it, a um, little more balance, a little more com- little more confidence in there, which is great, but my thought was, like, I'm going to hold on to him because if he, if he doesn't like it, he's going to be mad, and then if he falls, like, if, if he hates it and he falls, he's going to be covered in it. And he's going to be even more mad. So, so it's a good thing I did because he did not like it. He did not. And then, you know, I got to the ocean because uh, Jill loves the ocean and the beach and all those things. And she does all the swimming and whatnot. So she took him out there. He absolutely hated it. And uh, which, I mean, you know, new thing. He hated the grass the first time he stepped on it. But now he loves being outside. So, you know, maybe next year he'll be a little better at it. Or maybe he'll just hate it forever. I don't know. But we only went once because we decided not to test them again. Um, not to kind of force it on him because he, he really did not have a good time. But like once we, we got a little beach tent, either we bought it or somebody got it for us. I can't remember. But, you know, you set that up so he's shaded and we get the towels down so he's not actually on the sand. So he like Jill goes out and does all her swimming and whatnot. And I sat with him in the tent and he was fine then. Uh, but generally, he didn't love the beach. He did not. He liked pretty much everything else except the pool, which he hated, I think, more than the beach, which was insane. Like I, I did not think that was going to happen. But he truly did not like being uh, aquatic at all. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he's his father's son for sure. But that would be a pretty good indicator, right? Because I'm not a big fan of uh, of water things either. But yeah, he did not have fun with that. But he did love. So we got a playground. Patrons heard a little bit of this. But there was a playground a few blocks away, and it was like a cushy, rubbery kind of surface throughout the whole thing. So he could, you know, kind of tumble on that and not really hurt himself, which was good. And there was. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff like it's meant for kind of bigger kids, I guess. But he, there was some stuff that he um, he was able to do and enjoy, and we followed him around, and he basically got his energy out so we could go to bed. And then you know, then he woke up in the middle of the night anyway all week. So, uh, yeah, that was rough. But he loved the playground, um, and he he liked kind of being in the stroller, going for walks, being on the move. Um, he got to try some different foods, and. Other than, you know, the beach and the pool stuff, it was pretty solid. So, yeah, so there you go. Sorry, I'm shifting in my chair here. I'm trying to get trying to get comfortable. I don't know what, uh, not sure how that's affecting the sound of the show. I hope it's been fine. Um, my back's killing me. That's what it is. Let me turn it up a little bit. Is that better? Great. I hope that's not much worse, but there you go. So, yeah, um, where was I? Yes. He hated the beach and the pool, but everything else was great. There is a place down there nearby called the Churn House. I had heard about this because other people had gone down there, and they're like, yeah, you have to go to the Churn House. You have to go to the Churn House. And what it is, is they churn cereal into soft-serve ice cream. And so, like, I would get Cocoa Puffs and Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and they have toppings, you know, brownie bites, blueberries, uh, Lucky Charms marshmallows, Reese's, Oreos, stuff like that, and then drizzle. Vanilla, chocolate, marshmallow, peanut butter, things of that nature. So, you know, yeah, I spent a lot of money at the churn house and probably had way more dairy than I ever needed to have uh, in one week anymore. But it was absolutely delicious. Shout out to the churn house. Fantastic. Um, Yeah, my favorite one, I think, was the one I got the last day. Cocoa Puffs, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and a vanilla chocolate swirl, Lucky Charms marshmallows, and peanut butter drizzle. Yeah, drizzle. Yeah. That's what that sounds like. So, yeah, I, if you're down in, in Ocean City, I highly recommend the Churn House. If you like ice cream and cereal and things of that nature, try it out. You'll love it, maybe. Maybe you won't, but we did. We loved every bit of it. So um, that was fantastic. Thank you for the recommendation, everyone who recommended that one. Uh, we weren't near the boardwalk. It's really far away. 
And there was a shuttle service, but it did not start until the day before we left, and we saw it at like six o'clock that night. So like it did like we went down Sunday and left Saturday, and the shuttle service didn't start until Friday night. And we saw it Friday night at like six thirty or six o'clock or whatever. And so I was like, I'm like, all right, damn it. Well, that sucked. Cause it was like a 35 minute walk each way. And we're like, okay, if it was half that, we could do, because we'd have to do that twice, right? So with the kid and all that, and then, you know, walking up and down the boardwalk and whatever. And we did plenty of walking during the week anyway. As really what we did, what we did is we'd go, you know, sleep till whenever, go to go get some food, then go to dinner, um, get our ice cream, walk around the neighborhoods just to see what was up and see, uh, you know, get the lay of the land and see all of the houses. Um, it was a, it was a mixture of new developments that were being rented out either for the season or you know year round I guess you could live there year round by renting it I'm not sure if that was really an option but I I'd imagine it is and so it was funny to see like the new condos that look all the same like the the houses look exactly the same you rent out the first floor and the second floor separately or like separate quadrants of the house separately and then next to it is a smaller house that you can tell that somebody lives there year round and has been there for 30 years or whatever. And you know the developer went unto them and said, hey, hey, you know, here, take some money. We want to build a new house here. And they said no, which I think was great. Like there was one where it's like two big condos on each side. And then the middle house was a small, like one-story little house. And they didn't even take out their grass to put in a sidewalk. So it's So it's the... The development and then sidewalk and then the small house and the grass goes all the way out to the street or to the curb and then the sidewalk starts again with the development. I'm like, that is a power move. Not only are you not, you know, giving up your land, giving up your house so they can build a <laughs> development thing there, like condo there, uh, you're not even giving up your sidewalk. You're not even giving up your grass on your front lawn to put in a sidewalk. You're like, nope, <laughs> everybody. I love it. I love every bit of that. And uh, it was just really funny because you could tell because the houses that are that have been there, they have some character. Right. And like all the condos look exactly alike. And then we went down um, the last day we went down to the beachfront ones and they're just like sprawling mansions and it's ridiculous. And uh, yeah, I I don't even know. We looked at the um, like the here's how much all these condos would cost book and it's in the millions for those houses it's insane like if you wanted to buy one renting i don't remember what they were but um yeah it was all like development development like or like condo condo regular house condo condo regular house and it was crazy and um it was just really interesting to see the mix of all that and see how different the regular houses were and i thought that was really cool so up top, people who stayed there and said, no, developers, you're not taking away my house. How about that? No? All right. Um, I thought it was interesting. And also, the day before we left, or no, the night before that, we found a little sandwich place next to the churn house that sold lobster roll. So the last day we were there, we're like, you know what? Let's go get some goddamn lunch and get some lobster roll. And it was delicious. That's about the only seafood I really like. You know, shrimp and lobster, it's about it. And salmon. but. You know, it's expensive, but I'm not going to pass up a lobster roll. And it was absolutely delicious. So uh, if you're into that, if you're down there, go to go get some lunch at the at the sandwich place. Get your lobster roll. Go up the street to the pizza place. Get some uh, some shore pizza, and then um, and then go back to the churn house and get your ice cream. So it's all within a couple blocks of each other. So very walkable. At least that's the side of the um, of uh, of the town we were on. It was very walkable from where we were staying, so that really helped out for us. So, yeah, uh, generally, solid week. You know, even though the kid hated uh, the beach and the pool, he loved the playground and uh, seemed to enjoy everything else. So, And he's gotten really confident with the walking and the whatnot and being a big kid. So there you go. That was our vacation. Thank you, Dave and Miriam, for having us, for letting us stay at your place. And, uh, yeah, we had a, we had a good time. We enjoyed ourselves for the most part. So yeah, I mean, just I mean, just the kid hating the beach was, oh, I hate to see him like that. But again, all in all, had a good time. So thank you, Dave and Miriam, for that. And uh, if you go down the shore, if you go to Ocean City, 
go to the churn house because they are absolutely wonderful. It's delicious. And uh, let me know what you got. If you go down there, let me know your combination of, uh, of cereal and ice cream and whatnot. Because I just want to know. Just curious. All right. So I do have uh, one thing for you. Have a little pat peeve for you based on, um, well, this happened all week long. Is and I don't know if um, if this is because COVID has we've forgotten because we you know people weren't going out as much or people aren't going out as much still and we've forgotten how to behave in public or maybe this has just always happened and I've never really paid that much attention. Uh, Jill says it's always happened, but. This whole thing of like people not being considerate of anyone else's space and like not, I don't know if they're doing it on purpose or if they just, they're just not thinking about it. Like it doesn't cross their minds that like other people have to walk in the space that you're in. Like we were walking. So we have this stroller, right? It's pretty wide because strollers are wide generally. And we're going somewhere and there are kids on bikes who are like taking up the whole sidewalk and they're like, hey, excuse me, we have to get by. And the kid just stared at us. Kid was like, I don't know, 10, 12, whatever. They just stared at us. And we're like, hey, no, like, no, we have to go. Like, we need to be on the sidewalk because we have a stroller. And it took much longer than it should have for the kid to realize, oh, I have to move completely out of the way. And then, like, people in Wawa and, and in the grocery store, like, there was a lady in the grocery store who just, like, followed us incredibly closely for I don't know what. So this, yeah, this lady like followed us in the store and like people at Wawa, just like, people like kind of wandering aimlessly inside places and people just like not moving on the sidewalk and people just like being in the way in general and just not having any, not paying any mind to anybody around them and anybody like in the space, not realizing, again, I don't know if they're just being <laughs> or if they just genuinely don't think of other people being in their space. It just doesn't cross their minds that like someone else might have to go this way or someone else might have to be in the space that I'm currently occupying, right? So I'm not sure uh, if they're intentionally being jerks about it or if they're just, you know, if that's the kind of people there, if they're just oblivious at this point. And I, I don't know if, if being locked down for a period of time when we couldn't go anywhere and be in public, um, if that played a role, but... I have to say, no, sir, I don't like it. And this one more thing, and then we'll get off this and, and get ready to wrap here. But I was in line at the churn house. So the, the only thing that bothered me about the churn house is it's not accessible, meaning there's no ramp, just stairs, and the stroller wasn't going to fit in there anyway. So she went off to, to do things with him, and I was, getting, I was in line waiting to get the ice cream. And this woman was in line behind me. And with her kid, her kid was like, I don't know, eight or nine or whatever. And... When you go to the churn house, the big menu of like, all right, step one, choose your ice cream. It's vanilla, chocolate, or a swirl. And then choose a cone or a cup or a whatever. And then it's like, all right, choose your cereal, and there's a big list. And choose your toppings, and there's a big list. And choose your, your drizzle. And you, so there are a whole bunch of options that you have to consider before you go up there and order. And because it's all made right away. So the kid is trying to figure out what she wants. And... Again, it's a lot, right? So you're like, okay, we need, we got to go through this, this, and this, and this. And the mom, instead of helping the kid decide what they want, is trying to take a picture of them like in line. And they're like, like a selfie while they're in line at the churn house to get ice cream. And then I was, and then I was just like, what? Why are you doing? Like, what? Maybe it's just because I don't take a lot of pictures. Like, I don't, I don't like my face anyway, so I don't take selfies, you know, in any environment. But you know, not everything that you're doing has to be documented, right? Like you can just say, hey, I went to the churn house. It was delicious. Take a picture of the ice cream and say, I went to the churn house. It was awesome. Like we don't need to see a selfie of you in line. And then she's like, oh, you weren't looking at the camera. And the kid, meanwhile, is trying to look at the menu and figure out what she wants. And then it's just like, like what? And the kid's looking at the menu. And again, the mom and the kid is clearly like overwhelmed by all of the options, and the mom is taking a picture of her looking at the menu. Like, who is that for? Like, what? how many Facebook likes are you going to get for that lady? Like, what is... Oh, at the, looking at the menu at the churn house. Like, what the f*** are you doing? And there were people behind her who knew what they wanted. And I could clearly see one of them getting agitated. Like, are you going to... And the line was... You know, line moved as fast as it could, right? But at a certain point, 
if you don't know what you want, get out of the way and get back in line when you're ready. Because there are people behind you who are ready, right? But no, you're you're focused on getting a picture for the gram or whatever. And uh, is that what they say? For the gram? And it just like, it was really just the whole week of of people being oblivious to everyone around them. I think that was it, including their own children, apparently. And I think that really, that's kind of where this came from, is that like, yes, people like, I know, like maneuvering a kid in a stroller is not easy, but everyone around us didn't make it, didn't have to make it harder by being either willfully, uh, I don't know, willfully obtuse. No, um, now you're just morbidly obese. Uh, <laughs> that's a joke for one again. And I, I don't know if they did it on purpose, but it really like, it didn't help. And they didn't have to be so rude about it or so, uh, you know, just take a second or two to pay attention. And when your kid is trying to figure out what they want from a place, help them and then take a picture. How about that? Does that, that make sense? Did I, go, did I go anywhere with that? The point is that, yes, we were, you know, uh, getting a kid around in a stroller is cumbersome. I understand that. But people don't have to make it harder by, by just not paying attention to what's going on. I didn't get it. And it, it really bothered both of us all. But like everyone was just in the way and wondering why we couldn't get out of the way faster in some cases. Like it just, it just bothered me. Like, no, like it's, it's easier for you, one person walking on the sidewalk to move in a different direction than it is for the three of us. And I don't know if people aren't taught how to walk on the street anymore. Like if someone's coming on the same sidewalk as you move over, let them get by. And that maybe we're not teaching people that anymore. I plan to teach the kid that, of course, because like you're going to need to, you know, be aware of people around you. I think that's a thing too. Like just be aware of what's going on around you. And um and you won't have somebody on their podcast complaining about how you're being a d- how's that? Sound good? All right. So there you go. That's uh that's our vacation. How long we've we been here? We're about done, right? Yeah, we're good. So there's your your recap, your vacation recap. I'm sorry if this sounds weird. I kind of messed with the settings over here, but I think we're good. Um Yeah, so if you don't like sports, this is your time to get on out of here. I thank you for being here, and I'll talk to you next week with whatever is going on. I have no clue what's happening, but um, there you go. That's all, all right? For the non-sports people, that is all. But the sports isn't, it's not that much. It's not that much, and we'll end on some good news. Uh, But the Phillies are fun again. Let's start with this. Your Philadelphia Phillies. They fired their manager in June, June 3rd. They let go Joe Girardi. Then they won like 12 or 13 in a row, and they've won... um, as of today, 14 out of 16 or 15 out of 17 or something like that. They're like 14 and 3 or or 15 and – no, it's – what are they? 15 and 2 in June as of Monday. Um, so that's really exciting. Like it's really cool. I like when the – obviously, I like when my favorite team does well. And, um, you know, it turns out firing the manager uh, was a good decision, it seems like, so far. So, yeah, it's been fun. Maybe this week uh, it all fell apart, but um, – as of today, they are uh, they're over 500 and they're you know they're playing like a team that could make a wild card this fall. So I'm excited. I love to see it. The Flyers hired a new. Co- I meant oh damn it! I meant to talk to you know what? I may still talk to the captain this week. So if that happens, uh, we'll put him at the end here. You know what? No, we'll do that right here. If um, if the captain is able to jump on with an update, we'll put him right here and say thank you, my friend. But if not, because he's busy, he's got stuff going on, and that's fine. Um, they hired a new coach. I wrote down no information. I just saw the alert and, uh, there's a good chance I was going to mispronounce his name anyway, but Flyers hired a new coach. (laughs) We'll see if the captain can join us with that. Uh, if not, that's fine too. But the Flyers, uh, yeah, new guy, new captain of the ship as it were. So maybe somebody can inject some life into this team because yeesh, not that fun. Not that fun to watch. Um, all right. So yeah, Phillies are fun. The bullpen is a mess. It's an absolute mess. It has been and will be unless a move gets made in the next couple of weeks here. Trade deadlines went August 2nd, I believe. So, because the 31st might be a weekend. So we'll see what happens there. Phillies are, uh, so far, they're fun again, and I'm enjoying what's going on since the uh, the managerial change. Uh, the Avalanche are, well, so far, have, uh, as I sit here, have kicked the crap out of the Lightning in the Stanley Cup final. So maybe... By the time you hear this, they will have uh, have won the Stanley Cup. Or if the Lightning have stormed back, see what I did there? Sorry. Uh, I know. Yep, yep. Boo this man. Thank you. Boo this man! 
I deserve the boo on that one. That was bad. Uh, but if they were able to come back and not up the series in some way, then maybe it's still going on. But um, in all likelihood, your Colorado Avalanche have won the Stanley Cup, so congratulations. For sure, though, your Golden State Warriors, just as I predicted, no, I didn't, uh, have won the NBA title. Congratulations. <laughs> Good for them. Basically said, hey, screw you. We're still the Warriors, goddammit. And uh, and they ran and, and did the thing. So good for them. I love Steve Kerr. I like Steph Curry a lot. Um, Andre Iguodala, still there. Big fan of him. Uh, you can tell I don't follow the NBA because all their names have just ran from my brain. But Steve Kerr's the man. Steve Kerr for Hall of Fame, their coach. I, should get, I want him on the show. That, uh, get that trending. Melt Steve Kerr. No, 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 not that. That's bad. No. I'd like to. T- I'd love to talk to Steve Kerr, though. If anyone knows how I can go about doing that, let me know. Ever read the Melting Pat? And uh, I would love to talk to Steve Kerr on this show. It'd be fantastic. Hey, Danny Schmitz, if you're out there, join me on the show to talk to Steve Kerr. Oh God, that'd be so fun. You know, I am still bummed out. We never got to talk to Horace Grant because we did. When Danny and I were doing uh, the Last Dance recaps on the show, I reached out to Horace Grant's people about coming on the show. I never heard back. Really bummed out. So maybe we'll see. Steve or Ben. Ben, is it all right if I reach out to Steve Kerr about coming on the show? We'll find out if Ben listens to the whole show or not. Uh, no, I'll ask him later. But but there you go. That's your um, that's your real updates there. Let's see. Phillies are fun. Warriors win. Avalanche may have won by now. We don't know yet. Uh, it won't happen for a couple days as I'm talking to you. But um, maybe by the time the Patreon version goes up, it'll be it'll be done if they sweep. I think. I don't know what the schedule is. But anyway, there you go. Those are your sports updates. And one more bit of news before we get out of here. The Milwaukee Brewers, and kind of a bummer, they released Lorenzo Cain, their outfielder. But before they did, they made sure to keep him on the roster long enough so he got a, his 10 years of service in Major League Baseball. And you might think, Pat, why did they do that? Why would they make a point to keep him in the game for 10 years before they let him go? Why didn't they just cut him and save the money or whatever they were going to do? Well, my friend... The reason that they did this is because in Major League Baseball, when you have 10 years of service, you are guaranteed a monthly pension. Uh, I don't know the exact number. Somebody floated out 7500 a month. I don't know if that's true or accurate, but you are guaranteed. You're vested, as we say in the, in the real world, I guess, uh, with your pension. So Lorenzo Cain, because he has 10 years of service and the Brewers kept him on their roster long enough to hit that milestone, hit that mark, he is uh, eligible for that monthly pension whether or not he plays another game in the major leagues. And from all accounts that I've heard, Lorenzo Cain is a great dude. I've always thought he was a good player. You know, obviously he must have struggled this year. I haven't kept up with the NL Central as much as I would like, but good on the Brewers and Phillies. How about you grab Lorenzo Cain? Just go for the hell of it. Why not? Can he pitch too? Can he learn how to pitch? No? All right. Anyway, so good on the Milwaukee Brewers for allowing Lorenzo Cain to stay on their roster and attain. 10 years of service to guarantee that pension. Good for you, Brew Crew. Give them the fanfare as well. Why don't we? Yeah, why don't we? I don't know what I tried to say there instead, but there you go. That is our show. We made it. We got it at we oh my god. Somehow, some way, we made it out of the show here today. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Lip Candy for the song. Their uh, their song Straight Jacket is available now. Their debut EP, Where Did All the Bands Go, coming out later this summer, lipcandyband.com. Tell them I sent you. Don't tell them about the riff I did because I screwed it up. Um, thanks to Dave and Miriam for uh, for the vacation, for the uh, for letting us stay at your place. We had a great time, uh, and for the ride as well. We appreciate that too. Oh, and for the pancake house trip at the end of the week. We appreciated that as well. Delish. Pancakes are awesome. I love them. Bill's Pancake House, shout out. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I think we're good. I think we're okay. TheMeltyPat.com for all of my stuff. There is a page, uh, a tab on there, the network tab. We'll let you know about all the other shows we got going on here. So go check that out as well. I'm working on making it better. If you know anything about HTML coding and whatnot, reach out to me. Uh, I'll pay you five bucks if you can make it look better. All right? Thank you very much. That's all. We're good, right? Yeah, I think so. G Love and Special Sauce with Cold Beverage. They're going to play us out as they always do. Philadelphonic.com for more from them. That is all. We are good, right? 209 867 7638 with your questions, comments, concerns, observations, and of course, corrections, text, or a voicemail. 
And um, yeah, all my social media stuff is the Melting Pat. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. Um, am I on anything else? I'm not on TikTok. I don't really know what that is, but uh, damn it. Maybe I should be. I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I have no clue. So there you go. That is, uh, that is our show. This has been a boiler production. So until next time, my friends have fun, be safe. Thank a veteran, wear your mask, wash your hands, get vaccinated and boosted when you can. And of course, don't do anything I wouldn't do. We are good, right? We are. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. I'll talk to you next week about what I don't know. I really don't know, but um, that's all for today. So, oh man, you've been inside. The, <laughs> I think we are good, right? Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot for being here. You've been inside the Melting Pat. Oh, Jesus. I'll talk to you next time. Go crap open a cold one. Mm-hmm.